Good morning and welcome to the Church in the Gardens. We are pleased to have Reverend Missick with us this the rest of the month and in September Reverend Perry will be joining us. Please pray for all who are sick and healing, especially Jeannie DeCasa, who has um, who's recovering and is back home. Um, we do have some openings on our boards and committees. The trustees, deacons, and the Board of Christian Education all have openings. And if you're interested uh, in working with us, please call, contact Cindy Herendine at C-I-N-H-E-R-E-N-D-N at AOL.com. The Zoom Bible study that usually occurs on Saturday mornings is on a summer break and will return in September. When it does, please join them. And the care committee is also looking for any volunteers who can help um, congregants in this time of need. And also if you need some care, if you need some support or need some help, please contact one of the care committee members. They are listed here below. On Tuesdays at seven o'clock for half an hour, we have silent prayer and meditation, which occurs online at the same link. Uh, please join for a few minutes or a half an hour. If you have any questions, contact again, Cindy Herendine as part of the transformation team. And today we welcome again, Reverend Dr. Glenn Missick. He has been with us for many, many Sundays, and we are pleased to have him back this Sunday. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome again to these, this worship service. Uh, some of you are probably here, hopefully some of you on vacation, where you can watch this also in the middle of this pandemic. So as we, in order to begin our worship service, let, a, let us enter into prayer. Good morning, Lord. We thank you for this day. This is the day which you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in, in it. We bless you. We praise you. We worship you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. And now as we enter into worship, we pray that we invoke the presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will come in um, and that you will be glorified and your people will be edified. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Good morning, everyone. It's good to, good to see you, good to be back. And uh, look who I found, a, a friend who was, who was playing on the side of the road. No, just joking. That was, uh, this is Harris Farrell. And uh, we've, we've gotten the, the band back together, at least two of us. So um, it's good to be here. Um, please join with us singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
In order to come before a holy God, we must confess our sins. So let us enter into our prayer of confession as we pray together. Holy God, you see us as we are and know our inmost thoughts. We confess that we are unworthy of your gracious care. We forget that all, all life comes from you and that to you all life returns. We have not always sought or done your will. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. Heal us and make us whole. Set us free from our sin and restore to us the joy of your salvation now and forever. Amen. of God assures us in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins. Therefore, I say to you, we are pardoned. Amen. Now let us pass the peace, the peace of, the, of Christ be with you. And also with you. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 8. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and her penalty is paid, that she has re received from the Lord's hand double for all, for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever.
gospel reading is from Matthew 11 verses 27 to 30. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, good morning, everyone. Um, on this, uh, what we call dog days of summer. This East, this, I start to say Easter, it's not Easter, it's August um, Sunday. We, um, I, I, I read somewhere that this, because uh, I saw where we have five Sundays, I have to come back again next week, and uh, this is a little unusual. Some, I think somebody says it's about, uh, it happens every 83 years or something like that. Um, but it, it was, I was telling Sonny and others, Alice and others, Rama, earlier that Normally, as pastors, we don't do much preaching in August. We take a vacation. I try to sneak in a little vacation. Uh, my wife and I went down to the Jersey, Jersey Shore on Friday, but we came right back on um, on yesterday afternoon, early yesterday afternoon, with my sister and her husband. And um, but um, this this is. Uh, I woke up this morning and I knew I had to exercise. I really didn't feel like it, but. Um, I, I had to do it anyway to get that energy back. But uh, I hate taking short vacations. In fact, I posted on Facebook last night uh, that uh, I showed some photos. So we were sitting on a Jersey, Jersey Shore, and I said, this is, uh, I said, every year I'm usually down in Turks and Caicos, uh, beautiful by nature beach. And I said, uh, so I'm down here on the Jersey Shore now because of COVID-19 pretending. <laughs> Got a lot of feedback on that one. <laughs> People feel sorry for me. They say, it's going to get over forever. And, you know, you can come back. <laughs> but anyway, I want to talk this morning, and I'll try to be brief on the topic, the comfort factor, the comfort factor. Let us pray. Eternal God, bless now your word that it will uh, go forth and not return unto you void. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Let all of God's people say, Amen. So we, we are talking, last week we talked about uh, how do we survive in the wilderness. We talked about the experience that Jesus had as he went out after his baptism into the wilderness, tempted by Satan. We also touched a little bit on the, the children of Israel as they came out of Egypt. In, in the book of Exodus, Deuteronomy, all around there. Uh, and and they spent, actually, Jesus spent 40 days in, the, in, in his wilderness experience, but the children of Israel spent 40 years, 40 years in, in the wilderness um, experience. And so, and then finally God led them into the promised land. Not all of them got to the promised land. We don't know how long this, this uh, coronavirus is going to last. And... Some of us are pretending that it's, it's going to go away, but it's not going to go away, contrary to, to uh, some opinions. Uh, we need to listen to the science of this. Uh, these, these, uh, these, these plagues or pandemics do not, they, they do not just go away. We have to find a vaccine. And so I, I pray that you, you're being careful and uh, wear your mask, do the distancing, and uh, just stay safe through this. And in the midst of this, as we, we know, we've known, I'm sure you have, I have, <laughs> so many have lost loved ones. There's so many who are still sick. Uh, in New York, we've done a good job, but, but we're expecting that second wave to come back, and they believe it's going to come back 
uh, before November as was previously predicted. And so we need to really take care of ourselves and be sorry for the students uh, and the teachers and all others who have to go back and let us continue to lift up the uh, essential workers, our nurses, doctors, uh, hospital workers and others on the subways and the buses um, as they go out into that danger. This is gonna be with us for a while. So we need to, we need to just hunker in and get comfortable. Now, how does this relate to our scripture this morning? Uh, the, the prophet Isaiah uh, in that 40th chapter says, uh, comfort, comfort my people, says your God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended. Now we, we, we are looking towards the future and that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The, this passage now deals with the children of Israel, uh, more specifically the tribe of Judah, uh, that were taken again into exile. Uh, just like they were taken to Egypt, they're now in Babylon in exile. And they're, they're there under, you know, Babylon, I believe they said it's Iraq today, uh, and Babylon and then Persia. And um, if you look at the 137th Psalm uh, a little bit later, it, it, you, you see them there and they get depressed, like many of us are getting depressed now. We get an anxiety is built up. We can't go to the restaurants that we want to. We can't go out like we want to. And we, 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 we want to, and you see our young people disobeying some of the rules and then they come down. But, but more, most importantly for our, our context, we see many churches that are disobeying the rules. And it is said that the two places that you can really catch this virus are <laughs> what an opposite, in bars and in churches. And so we need to be careful. Um, but here are the children of Israel in exile in Babylon. And then at 137th Psalm, they said that uh, by the waters of Babylon, there we sat. And we remembered Zion. Zion is, was basically an affectionate word for Jerusalem. And when we sing that we are marching to Zion's Christians now look at the new Jerusalem uh, revealed in the book of Revelation, that we are marching up to Zion. Zion is that place that unfortunately they felt that that was the only place they could worship God. And maybe some of you feel that the only place that you can truly worship God is at church in the gardens. Not so. Not so. God is spirit, said Jesus to the woman at the well. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You don't need a building to worship God. You can worship God anywhere, anytime, as you see what we're doing now on the Zoom uh, media. And so, and, and, and so they, they, they said in that 137th Psalm, our captives, our slave masters, ask of us, to sing the songs of Zion and listen to their um, depressing words. It said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Huh. Well, I believe that if you really love the Lord, if you really have that connection with God through Jesus Christ, you can sing God's songs anywhere, on the streets, in your home, wherever you go on vacation, you can sing the Lord's song in your, the, 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 the psalmist says that he gives us songs in the night and God puts a song in my heart every morning when I wake up and every night before I go to bed. So let's take a look at this passage for a little bit um, as we deal with this comfort factor. We find uh, again in this passage from the book of Isaiah an overture to the entire prophecy of the book. It, it came at, at the turning point of history Historians speak of it as the end of the Babylonian and the beginning of the Persian period. One contemporary of Isaiah saw it as, as climactic, climactic, uh, as a climactic hour when God was arriving on the human scene to establish an ultimate divine order. I believe God is doing that now as we go through this pandemic. Uh, to, 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 to Isaiah, it was not the final event in history, but spiritually it inaugurated a new day with his good tidings of God. 
some of you, I believe I told you last year sometime that, that uh, 2020 is really the end of the celebration, which began in, in 2017 of the Protestant Reformation, when we Protestants broke away from the Catholic Church. Um, and it's the end of, excuse me, it's the end of, <laughs> hope that wasn't Freudian. <laughs> it's the end of 500 years of the Pro Protestant Reformation. Now, I, I, I've also studied it, and it says that every 500 years, God refine, re revives the church, or as we say in the Presbyterian church, God reforms the church. We are reform and reforming. And so it, it's going to be amazing to see what God is going to do with, with us as as the church of Jesus Christ, when we come out of this wilderness experience. So nowhere in the Old Testament is, is there more of the Christian gospel than in this passage uh, in Isaiah. Um, here we see God creator and sovereign of all nations. God at work in history and judgment and redemption. Let me back up a little bit and say that normally uh, this passage is used in, in the beginning of Advent, the beginning of Advent, and um, but um, I'm trying to use it. I'm re-preaching it again so that it can relate to us in this uh, wilderness experience. So we also see the God, see God's gracious forgiveness of, of of His sinful people. God, we see God educating them um, to be for the evangelism of humankind. I mean, that's the whole purpose of the Christian church. We are called to go out and bring others into the fold, to bring others back to God. There are people who are, who are searching, people who are existentially are searching for, for that, you know, some people call it, uh, you know, the divine, the, the one, the this, the that, they call them all, all kinds of stuff and, and people, because we know that deep down within us, there's something, there's, some, there's more to us than this flesh and blood. As we grow older and we begin to deteriorate, excuse that expression, but, but you know, the wrinkles set in. <laughs> you know, I try to comb my hair back now. I, know, I hate combing my hair back when I was young. I always comb it forward. I can't do it because I'm losing a little bit up here now. You know, I thank God my father had good hair. I hope I don't turn out to be like my uncle who was bald up here, you know. But God bless people who are bald. bald. But anyway, back in this passage here, we also see God choosing, training, and empowering people from among, from among them, uh, his servant church, from his rung of servant church, to win to, win to him uh, all peoples of the world. Remember that when God said to Abraham, I am going to bless you, it, didn't, it doesn't just stop there in that 12th chapter of the book of Genesis. God says, I am going to bless you so that you will be a blessing. We see in the New Testament, as uh, someone said, you were reading through the book of Acts. It's an exciting book to read through. Um, and, and Paul, you see the fight with Paul and Peter and others as to whether the gospel was for the Gentiles or not. I imagine if we didn't have a Paul, where would we be? We would all have to be Jewish, right? Which means that we would all have to... Uh, to go obey the law and whatnot. And as I'm in the book of Romans now, and as Paul talks about the law, he said, it's not the law, it is we are saved by grace because we cannot obey. The law was given to us to reveal uh, inadequacies, to reveal, <clears throat> excuse me, the sin that, that, we, that we practice so often. And God knows that we, 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 we're living. For those who think that everything is all lovey-dovey, we're not. As I said, we are into two pandemics, into the pandemic of coronavirus, when it's pandemic of systemic racism, which has not been solved. And we need to get it. I pray to God we get it right this time because those of us of color, we're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. We, we you know, it, it, people don't understand our pain. It is, it is just, you know, when somebody's put, put, putting pressure on your neck and don't like you just because you go out. Quite often when I go out, I try to wear a suit. I'm tired of that. So today I'm wearing this, you know, because somehow I get a different type of respect. Uh, you know, anyway, I hope that we can solve this whole issue of racism and, and uh, as we go, because if we, I tell people all, all quite often that if we cannot live together here as brothers and sisters, how in the world are we going to live when we get to heaven? You know, uh, I think it was John that says, uh, how can you say you love God whom you have not seen and hate your brothers and sisters? Who you see every day, we need to stop it, and we need to we need to 
We need to solve it. And I, mean, and I don't just mean solve it, oh, lovey-dovey. Oh, I, I, I love Reverend Missick. He's such a nice person. No, no, no. There's more to me than Reverend Missick. There are lots of others who you need to love also. So we also see God employing the vicarious suffering of his righteous servant to bring nations to repent and, and to life with him. My friends, this is the gospel of God here in this book of Isaiah, according to the prophet, the word of the Lord, which was both enlightening and potent uh, to accomplish its purpose, foreshadows the word, uh, as John puts it, made flesh, revealing God's glory, full of grace and truth. I like Isaiah. I love reading that book. When you read the sixth chapter, right? And here is Isaiah in, you know, in the day that King Uzziah died. May I ask you this morning, who is your Uzziah, right? You know, who's that person that's keeping you in bondage? What is that person? What is that thing that's keeping you in bondage? But Isaiah says, in the, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. He was in a mode of worship and he worshiped the Lord. The seraphims and all that stuff is flying all over the place. But the key word there is when you get further down, when, when, when the worship was all over, when we had got through worshiping, God comes back and says, whom shall I send? And Isaiah's answer was, here am I, Lord, send me. Read that sixth chapter of the book. These words, my friends, from comfort, comfort, my people, says your Lord. These words fit the plight of apprehensive, perplexed, and the frustrated exiles in Babylon and are relevant to us today as we go through exile with this pandemic in this 21st century Babylon. They are three, they are three in number. God, number one, God at work redemptively in the events of history, the, the, the two for the frailty and transient nature of human beings. Hey, we're not here forever. I believe I said it to you the other day, and this little phrase that I throw out, each of us has a reservation at the grave and it comes without the privilege of a cancellation. You can't cancel it like you do a vacation. We're gonna go there. So the question is, will we be ready when we go there? It's, you know, what's on the other side? We don't know, but if we believe Christ. He says, I have a place prepared for you, of, uh, a place not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. In my father's house are many mansions and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. There'll be no more crying there, no more dying there. And so Isaiah comes back. As we come to our text, he says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Speak tenderly to church and the God. Speak tenderly to New York. Speak tenderly to the United States and political chaos right now and, and racial chaos right now. To speak tenderly to the world that's all caught up in, the, in these viruses and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord hand, the Lord's hand double for all her sins. My friends, God is active in current happenings. Attention is focused on God in the council of heaven and upon the earthly scene. No summons is given to depress or confuse people to rouse themselves and break their bonds. In both the Old Testament and the New Testament, the gospel is first a message concerning God. It is what God has done. It is not about us. It is not about me. It is not about Sonny. It is not about the choir. It is not about the deacons. It is not about the council. It is about what has God done? What is God doing? Are we worshiping God or are we worshiping a building? I, I still hear people saying, I want to go back to church. And I say, but, but you are the church. What do you mean go back? Are you talking about the building? They said, they finally come and say, yeah, I, I, I need to be honest. But, but, but what, what, has, what has God, what, what, is, what, what is God doing in your life as you go through this pandemic? Are you, are you, are you getting closer to God? Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. We need to get closer to God. I don't know about you, but I'm trying to get closer to the Lord as I go through this pandemic. I'm trying to deepen my prayer life, deepen my Bible study life, doing some reading and theology and, 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 and watching. There's so much out there on the, on the internet now. You know, you can pick and choose. Be careful who you, who you pick and choose. Make sure that it is God that they're worshiping. 
and, and through his son, Jesus Christ. So let me leave you three points this morning as, as, as I come towards the end of this uh, talk. I call it talk. We don't call it sermons anymore. I have a lot of friends that I meet with online and and they said, you can't preach like you used to preach anymore. <laughs> you know, you get feedback from people you can't. Uh, so, but I believe that we're in a mode now of teaching, a mode of teaching. My people perishes the Bible for lack of knowledge. Um, so number one, we cannot develop a relationship with God before, before asking forgiveness of our sins. We cannot be asked for a relationship with God before develop a relationship with God before asking for forgiveness of our sins. Somebody said that, you know, we, we, we ask for forgiveness for the sins that we've done that we don't even know we've done. He said, well, I haven't done anything wrong. I've been a good person. Oh. <laughs> what you call good is not up to God's standards. What we call good is usually up to somebody or our own standards. Uh, no one is good, says the Bible. I like that hymn that says, pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own their presence to cheer and to guide. Hope for today and a bright hope for tomorrow. Generously, my friends, they are the people of, of, of Israel, the people of the Babylon, Babylon, they are told that the nation has received double for her sins. They've been punished twice, okay? Pardon is always an act of God's grace. Thank God for grace, amazing grace, right? Both the discipline and the vicarious suffering of the righteous are his appointment. His fatherly heart goes out to sinners. His arms are open as, you know, like we're taking little children and we comfort children who are crying. God's arms are open to receive the penitent. His discipline, Isaiah is saying, serves to produce penit penitence and to turn the rebellious to God. God's forgiveness is not to be set against God's righteousness. It is part of it. He is a righteous, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 21 says, he is a righteous God and a savior. And so we come back to our text, comfort, comfort, my people says your God. Secondly, not only does God offer us, we need to ask for forgiveness, when we, uh, if we want to be in a good relationship with the Lord. But we need, through Christ, we need to know this, through Christ, our sins are, will be forgiven. I, I know lots of other prophets and lots of other gurus and, and religious leaders, they, they don't offer this type of promise. Remember Jesus many times, particularly the woman who was being stoned in adultery. And what did Jesus say to her? Your sins are forgiven you. God forgives of us our sins. Sin is not just drinking and smoking and cursing somebody out and all that sort of thing. Sin, those are, those are the symptoms of sin. Now, the biggest sin is our separation from God, is our walking away from God. I don't need you. Get out of my face. I don't need you, Lord. You know, I can do it. I can pull myself up by my boots, bootstraps. Well, keep on doing that. But here's the good news. As I quoted earlier from 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, our Lord is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Through Christ, your sins will be forgiven. And then lastly, God through Christ will always bring you comfort. Jesus says to you and he says to me in that passage of Matthew that Allison read so eloquently earlier, he says, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I like that psalm, that psalm that says, Oh, rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. In the 40th chapter, the same 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah says that young man may run and grow weary, but they that wait or hope upon the Lord and the Lord will run and not grow weary, will walk and not faint. My friends, Jesus says, come to me. Don't look at there. Are lots of other people, other things out there. But Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. I understand your condition. I know what it's like to lose a loved one. I lost my very best friend, Lazarus. And that's the only time in the Bible that Jesus wept. I think it's John 10, 35. As kids, we would always learn that. It was the shortest, shortest verse in the Bible. 
So Jesus understands our pain. And the prophet Isaiah, who, from whom Jesus uh, quoted a lot of scripture from, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Many of us are acquainted with grief now because we know loved ones who've died from this coronavirus. There's so much shooting going on in New York right now. You know, how do we identify with, with those people who've lost loved ones? There, there's a, there's two, there are two hurricanes now coming up in the Gulf of Mexico. How do we deal with that? You know, we deal with that by turning to God who comforts us, who gives us, and we turn to Jesus who says, come to me. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and lowly and hard and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And then you look at verse eight as we close, it says the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stand forever. This is the word of God this morning. Receive it, incorporate it into your life, develop that relationship with the Lord. And no matter what you go through, God will be with you. Emmanuel, God with us. God will not fail you. I'm taking from me. I know what I'm talking about. May God bless you this morning. And may God help you and comfort you as you go through your time. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let us respond by singing Comfort Me. Harris and I will play this hymn all the way through so you can hear what it sounds like if you don't know it already. Thank you, Sonny. Very appropriate song. Now let me pray for you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we're so thankful for your word that you offer us comfort as we go through this painful period now in our lives and the, and the season of this, this time, this time of our lives, this coronavirus, this virus of, of, of racism where we, where we don't like your people whom you've created and 
Help us, Lord. We, 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 we just bless you this morning. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you that you are always available to us 24-7. We thank you for the power of your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you, O oh God, for Isaiah. We thank you that he said earlier that when you ask, whom shall I send? And he said, send me. Thank you for those who are listening right now that you've sent them here this morning, Lord, to listen, to hear your word, and not only to hear your word, but to become doers of your word. Help us to reach out beyond uh, uh, ourselves, Lord, and do not be selfish with your gospel. You, you, you paid such a, such a big price, Lord, that we may, might become children of God, that we might become princes and, and princesses. We thank you for that relationship that we have with you through Jesus Christ, your son. And we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, who is called the comforter, who comforts us, Lord, in our hour of grief and our times of suffering. And Lord, there are so many that are suffering right now. We think of those who, who are sick with this uh, coronavirus. We pray that you would heal them. We pray, Lord, for, we thank you for, but Jeannie, I believe it is, that, that we went into the hospital and for successful coming out operation. We pray, we thank you, Lord, for, we pray for each one on our sick, sick and shuttered list at, at Church in the Gardens. We pray uh, for all in hospitals now around the world that are suffering from this virus. We pray, Lord, that you would heal them. We pray that you would heal our land, Lord, as we go through our political parties now, through the conventions, Lord, we pray that you would stop the, the visceral uh, and the, uh, language, Lord, and that we would come and sit down and realize that we are on the small planet as brothers and sisters. And especially in your church, Lord, help us to realize that we are one in spirit, one in the Lord. We bless you and we praise you, Lord, for who you are and whose we are. We lift up our world again. We lift up our nation. We lift up our city. Lord, we pray your blessings upon them. And I pray for each person under the sound of my voice and those who are watching here this morning. Lord, I pray that you would touch them. You know more about them than I do, Lord. You penetrate their innermost being. And so I ask that you do that this morning, Lord. Those who may be troubled within their minds, uh, suffering from anxiety or depression, ease that depression, Lord. Ease that anxiety. We pray for those who are sick in their bodies. We pray for healing. You are the great physician. We pray that you would touch them and heal them and let them know that you love them. Those, Lord, who, are, who feel lonely right now, Lord, we pray that you would take them in your arms and rock them in your arms and give them the comfort that only you can give. We bless you and we thank you for that. We worship you, Lord. We praise you. You are a good God. We love you. We may not always understand, but as we wait upon you and help us to wait upon you in this exile and help us to know that, that you will come through for us, we bless you. We praise you. Now, Lord, we ask that you hear the request, whether they're silent or open of your people right now as they pray. What a friend do we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for hearing the request of your people, and we know that you're going to act upon it. So without further ado, we want to thank you for what you're doing now and for what you're going to do in the future. We thank you in the precious and mighty name of your son, Jesus, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
My friends, God has blessed us with his word, and I hope that you receive the word. And when you go home, do some more reading of the word. Um, and uh, now it is our time to give back to God. God has blessed us, you know, uh, it's called it's, it's, it's reciprocity. The law of reciprocity is called God blesses us. We need to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, says the psalmist. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. God has blessed us. We have food. We have, hopefully, we have food and we have a place to live in. There's so many people who don't have that. So as we give to for the work of this ministry this morning, know that you're giving not just to church and the gardens, but you're giving for the work of the Lord. And it will not go, you will not go unrewarded. Give generously this morning. Allison is now going to tell you how to give. So there's three basic ways to donate. You can mail your check in to the Church in the Gardens. You can have your bank. You can go to your bank and set up a direct transfer. Or you can pay through PayPal, which can be found on the website. Rama has included the information in the chat. With reverence and awe for your ways which offer us comfort, we offer our gifts for the work of love and justice, the work of healing, restoring, and offering comfort to others in your holy name, God of our hearts. Amen. 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 And now let us join together singing, Be Still, My Soul.
Thank you unto him who's able to do far more abundantly than what we could ever ask or think. To the only wise God be dominion, majesty, and power. My friends, the blessings of God, the Father Almighty, the love of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit go with you as you go back into exile. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sonny, and thank you, guys, and folks. Uh, we're now coming to coffee hour, but before you do, before they go back into the world and be a blessing, okay, and bless somebody else, tell somebody else about this program so they can come on. By just doing that, you're being a blessing to the Lord and to others. Now, let us have a chat, right? Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh my goodness, everybody disappeared. Smile, put a smile on your face. God is with you, God is with you. Amen. Amen. Good to see you. Thank you. Everybody taking vacation? No. 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 <laughs> I think there's some people on the phone on vacation. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you could do that. Worship while you're there. Just want to shout out and say thank you for your prayers and your support. Uh, thank, thank you for you. the beautiful service today. Thank you to the worship leaders, Allison and Rama and Sonny and Harris. And the music was wonderful. I loved the new hymn, the comfort hymn. That was, yeah, that was wonderful. Yeah, really good. Yeah. I just tell Sonny what my sermon is, and he picks, he picks, he picks the right stuff. So he's pretty good. Um, we kind of yeah. like it. I'm all right. <laughs> Thanks. By the way, we forgot to pray for the college students that are going back to college, so keep them in your prayers. And also pray for the people in the Gulf that are getting ready to get hit by two hurricanes right now. We just saw what that little storm did in New Jersey down there, trees all rooted up and all that. So imagine how they're bracing for that right now in the midst of all this pandemic. So, yeah. Have a blessed week. Have a good chat, folks. Feel free to chat with each other, drink your coffee and virtual reality. We're gonna we're gonna be with this for a while. So right. <laughs> Harris is hopefully oh, is here this morning. Thank you. Hey Harris, okay, all right, great. Also back to seminary, uh, Dr. Missick, Reverend Dr. Missick, seminary starts in a few weeks. Oh, right, right. Oh, does that start after Labor Day? Yeah, yeah. To start from the 14th, I'm doing exegesis and uh, homiletics. Oh, wow. All right. That's so, when do we get to see you in the pulpit, Andrew? 
uh, maybe maybe next summer I'll, okay. I'll have the A game. Uh, right now work I'm. It. Okay, work on it. That's good. good. Indeed. How do you define homiletics? Is oh, that's the 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 preaching. That is the the art of learning to take the word of the Lord and then do as what um, Reverend Doctor Missick did this morning. Uh, exogete it to the point where it has a, a, a meaning for uh, today and obviously the original intent and then do it in less than 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's good. I think you just passed the test. Well done. I didn't know that. The definition. So Sunny, how is Lake Placid? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it was my first time. Um, we did a, a, a different hike every day, which uh, Valentine is built for, but I am not. So but you're, you're not you're getting legs like hers. That's good. That's yeah, good. those those Swiss they're born in the mountains, but um, I wasn't. <laughs> but no, it, it's good to be back. Also, yeah, I missed you all. Uh, thank you, Harris. Thank you, Sam. Linda, when are you guys coming back? Oh, you're still muted. Glenda, unmute, unmute. The, okay. sat the Saturday of, mem uh, of Labor Day weekend. Sorry. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's coming up soon. It is. <laughs> back to the crucible. <laughs> <laughs> I love you all. Good to see you all. Uh, have a great day. Have a great day. Be well. Thanks.